Well, hello, everybody. You are watching The Main Viewer. Today, we're going to talk about all things Mission Chicago. And there was something interesting that just happened. I, I only saw this today, but apparently this happened a few days ago. There, you know, the names for uh, Dr. Mbenga and Spock were released. Well, they were, they were, they backed out on them a few days ago, apparently. I had no idea. We're going to be talking all about that and way more. We've got two very special guests, one of whom is Marina Kravchuk out in uh, New Jersey. Hello, everybody. And uh, we've got Larry Nemechek. You know him. You love him. Dr. Star Trek eating Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> Leftover long haul Oreos from the four hour nonstop. But yes. <laughs> we have our resident web crawler who's apparently she says she's still up north. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel. Hi, I'm just gonna see it. And uh Dr. Muhammad Noor is here as well. He's got a new title. I don't have it memorized yet, but he's also an occasional science advisor for Star Trek. Oh congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Always a pleasure wait, wait, to be on the main viewer. Title? Thanks for having me. What's your new title? What? Oh, uh, starting July 1st, I'm going to be uh, interim dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at Duke. So, oh, wow. it's huge. Just a, little, <laughs> just a little new job. Just a little new job. <laughs> so, we'll never see you again because it'll suck. No, no, I'm still, I mean, I've already booked going to Vegas. And they're like, okay. you know, I'm not okay. changing that. <laughs> That's a stipulation. That's a stipulation. That's, yeah. Well, Actually, the provost that brought means... me into the office to talk about it. She said, are you going to try to make everybody wear Starfleet uniforms? Like, I might. <laughs> <laughs> if you have that kind of power, then why would you not? You say, well, that's that really awesome. That is so cool, Muhammad. Congratulations. Unless it makes it to where you're so busy you can't join us anymore, then boo. Boo mm -hmm. that job. It's a priority. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, we got a lot of people in the live chat. Hello to everybody. So everybody here, except for this guy, went to Mission Chicago over the weekend, and everybody has so many thoughts on it, including myself. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. By the way, uh, Anne-Marie and Larry were both saying how they have very hoarse voices right now. What, what's up <laughs> yeah, with that? And it's not because we had an encounter with that pork. <laughs> <laughs> No, I forgot. I did. It was a heat wave here. It was like, it was 90, 95 on Thursday or Wednesday. And I forgot going back east in winter. I forgot to load up with my cold, my cough and stuff. No, I, I just had a sinus thing where you went from hot to cold, like walking in and out of a hot building to a cold outside when I was mm -hmm. growing up in Oklahoma. And that was the way winters were. Now it's like you never had that. So anyway, I just. People were like looking at me like I was like walking COVID or something. I'm like, no, no, no. It's, <laughs> and it's already, it's the cycle. I know what it is. The drip has stopped and now it's just the last of this and it'll be gone in a day or two. And people today on, on my Tuesday live, Trekland live, we're all saying, oh, you got the con crud. And I'm like, no. The yeah. minute I walked out of O'Hare into that cold air, I could feel my yeah. throat tickling. And I went, damn it, I didn't bring anything. Yep. yep. Amory, do you have the drip too? Same. Same, and it set up my asthma. So, Oof. luckily, the cough sounds a little different. So, people weren't as scared to be next to me. But, yeah. <laughs> Marina and Mohammed, do you have the con crud that seems to plague us occasionally? So far, nothing. Knock on wood. You know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to get myself tested just in case, like, you know, within a certain time frame. But I, I, I think we, we have managed to avoid the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I, I got a test on Monday and it was fine. I'm going to mm -hmm. get another one probably tomorrow. Mm hmm. So, so you know. uh, yeah, Ooh, hey, but, you're not yeah. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll test again tomorrow and see or a couple of days and see if I'm pregnant then. Yeah. So our good buddy, uh, podcast NX7062 says, so lame, Ryan, LOL. Mm -hmm. And I'm racking my brain trying to remember it's, what I said that about you didn't come to that you didn't come to Chicago. Oh, okay. I thought it was just a dumb joke I'd made. Agreed. So stay tuned for those. <laughs> well, one or the other. <laughs> All right. So let's say hello to everybody in the chat well, real quick. Well, to be clear, oh. Ryan, Ryan was very briefly there at the con, remember? Because when we had when we had our seventh rule photo, we had him on Zoom there in yes. the photo. Oh, hey. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I was 
hologram Ryan. I was just getting home and unlocking my front door in that picture. So you just kind of see me just unlock oh, yeah. the door. Are you the E T seven R H emergency seven little hologram? <laughs> I don't know what that means, <laughs> but. Then when I got in my house, I was like, all right, you guys, I'm ready. And you guys were like, bye. We already left. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Melissa Longo. Hello, Scott Jensen. Uh, cool dude. He says, Dr. Trek has my other favorite Trek podcast. That's pretty cool. Trek Files uh, with an F. J.R. Pool's hanging out. David Gregory. Uh, Melanie Jean Mayfield, she says, Go Duke, Muhammad. Yeah, thumbs up to that. Uh, JR Poole and David Gregory, as well as Linda Anderig, were also at the I did do a shout out on Trekland Tuesdays Live just an hour ago and said I was coming over here. So, a lot of these folks were with us over there. So, yay, welcome all of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and Peter H, Chuck A, Glenn Iverson, Robert Kaiser was also at the convention with you guys. Yeah, and in that's the picture. right. Yes. That's the first time I actually finally got to meet Robert in person, I think. Yeah. We may have met in Vegas before, but oh, I. Oh, okay. We have the great. Okay. We have the great Merman. We have uh, Marianne. Hello, Marianne. <laughs> Hi, Mom. And uh, <laughs> Hi, Mom upstairs. Have... We have a medallion wheel and Fran Iverson. We've got a celebrity in the live chat, everybody. Oh. Emmy award winning makeup effects artist Thomas Serpernant is joining us. Hello, Thomas. We love you. Maybe you should join us one of these days. Yeah. Okay. All right. So without further ado, hi, Donnie Pearson. Um, who wants to start about the, okay, how about this? Star Trek Mission Chicago, early April, picture it. <laughs> first impressions, right out the gate, first impressions. You want to start us off, Muhammad? I was thinking about who I saw first, and coming in, I passed Jamal Taylor, and I was like, oh, hey. Oh, that's <laughs> a harbinger of a great convention. There you go, exactly. Well, I don't think I met him first, I just recognized him from his picture on, online, like, oh, yeah, that's Jamal Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, just over, you mean overall impression or truly first impression? Just whatever your first impressions were, whether it was on the first day or right when you walk into the convention or just the yeah. kind of vibe that you felt. Very big and airy and open space. That was the thing I noticed, like going into the convention, it was just big. It just felt very airy, both inside the vendor area, as well as just in the hall between everything. So that was definitely a first impression for me. That's pretty good for uh, these days of COVID, actually. Yeah. You know, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Amory, did you have any uh, first impressions that jumped out at you? Um, just kind of like the, well, it was really nice. I saw a lot of people really fast, like on that Thursday night. So it, that made it feel much more convention-like. But um, I did like a quick walkthrough of the convention and then like the attached hotels. And just, I mean, it doesn't, there just like weren't enough. I loved it, except there weren't enough like um, spaces to meet that were open. It kind of seemed like a lot of the parts were closed down, which is I'm sure because of COVID also. But so it was like, and it definitely was very quiet, not like Vegas with like all those um, games going on in the background. So it was a little bit surreal. Well, if the, the bars were closing early. Did you do anything about that? Oh, uh, Larry and I tried to. I know we tried every day. But they just the people, well, the people who are working those shifts, like they could stay later. But that would mean they'd be there like twelve to fifteen hours working their shift. It's not like they had other people to come reinforce it. So finally, by the end of the convention, we we got it down to a science. She was a she was a one woman like protest machine. <laughs> so everybody, I think everybody going in knew that here's the like if you had never been to that area before like me i'd never been in chicago outside of o'hare so this was you know wow. but you we got google maps you can go and look and we all the world knew i think that there was nothing nothing mm -hmm. within three or four blocks to walk to that the hotels were connected but you needed to have places like what would the hotel places be would they be ripoffs would they be bad would they be you know and you knew it was going to be a big convention center with all these areas and there'd be a lot of walking and that could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. You know, like a lot of space and a lot of room and a lot of pretty good pressure. But if you were trying to come from a hotel to get in and do things and then you left and, oh, you left something in your room and you didn't pack for the day or you were trying to get somewhere, 
and then to deal with these hotels that were shutting down at nine and ten uh, the mm. the one the arc bar at the hyatt was the big place and about the time i christened it you know masquerade east mm-hmm. then we found out they're leaving at 10 and 11 and and the poor employees you feel bad for them because it's a manager decision and you've got <clears> tons of people there and they're haggard and they weren't staffed up for it. but the the bottom blow though was to uh to be shut down on sunday like it's not just sunday actually actually it's not just sunday i discovered that apparently they're closed four days out of seven Wow. Okay. So we arrived Thursday. They were open, thank goodness. They were Friday, Saturday, and that's it. That's the only three days. So the management was uh for well, I can only speak for Hyatt because that was evident that I stayed there. I kind of checked this. They were evidently completely unprepared for the needs of the convention because everything now, was kind of off. <laughs> someone was talking about being who was it? it? Wasn't one of you two? Somebody, one of the women was in a women's room with someone from Reed just accidentally and said toward the end of it and said, what did you think? And the first thing I'll get to that. That was me. And the- it was not in the, in the, in the, in the it was not in the toilet. <laughs> oh, okay. It was you. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. I got a, I got to chat with somebody from you because them. they want, they wanted to get a, a feedback. But um, as far as myself, you know, it's interesting because uh, I, I went in, it wasn't so much first impression because I've been to McCormick before for professional conferences and I've stayed in Hyatt. So it's not like looking oh, really? at something brand new. On the contrary, when I got in, it was more like looking at stuff and comparing it to pretty much across the board, the range of conventions that I've been to, both the large comic cons, medium comic cons, mm-hmm. Vegas, smaller track conventions, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. How does it compare? Did it work? Did it? So this, it's like a whole range. I mean, I wouldn't be comparing this obviously to the cruise because it's a thing apart. But for example, we could compare this to, for example, Destination Star Trek, which is also held in a very large box, <laughs> multi-story box. Uh, but there are differences again we'll get to it so uh but just a general i would not give you a first impression i would give you an overall impression i thought this was actually a successful convention for many reasons having said that i have observed a lot of uh discussions online and i come to the conclusion that there are as many opinions as there are as there are people who attended this event we had a fairly large continuum. Wait, of- people like to share their opinions online. I know, it's on the internet, shocking, right? Uh, but <laughs> we had a fairly large gamut? contingent of uh, new folks coming in who have mm-hmm. never been to either specifically track event or just generally any kind of convention. So it was mm-hmm. very interesting to see their take. And for the most part, I think it was very positive. People were excited to kind of like, oh my goodness, I actually found my tribe, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then of course you had a lot of returning fans, which in my case, my overall experience was I had a fabulous time because I must have hugged about 200 people it's the people that i know through las vegas it's the people i know through new york events uh it's like literally bumping into a person every you know 20 feet and mm-hmm. like okay selfies hugs you know how then you know you actually get to mm-hmm. catch up with folks you have i haven't seen since in some cases uh since august of 2019 last time we saw each other in las vegas so that part it's it's kind of so it's interesting this you know you will hear some people say well it was empty there was nothing the schedule was staggered. There was miscommunication. And there are certain things that most certainly Read Pop will have to probably kind of take stock and tighten up a bit. At the same time, you have to understand this is a licensed event. And I'm sure we're going to touch upon the, the vendors because I do want to bring up several stuff that was just absolutely fascinating in the vendor room. Um, you, you can only go that far. You know, you will not have like a Comic-Con when you have Etsy type makers and uh, artists bringing their stuff. It would not work at the licensed event. So there, you have to kind of like think of certain parameters, like how did it work within the parameters that the, the event was set up in? Mm-hmm. But overall, I, I was extremely pleased. I had a fantastic weekend. Hmm. I bring up one thing. So it's interesting that uh, Marina brought up one point, which is which is something that changed my mind at the convention. And that's something we knew ahead of time, which was that the events were staggered. So th- this was something going in, I actually thought was going to be problematic, but actually in, hi- in hindsight, actually, I think I maybe even slightly prefer it just for a couple of reasons. So by staggered, let me be clear that there are, there are, there are multiple rooms. So let's say there was the main event room and let's say the main event room had a panel from 2.30 to 3.15. They tended to be 45 minute long things. So 2.30 to 3.15, whereas say like a small room might have a panel that's going from 3 to 3.45. So you think, oh, well, if I go to this, I can't go to that. But you can hop between them and to some extent i was thinking for example like one of my talks i had a talk that was from 3 to 3 45 and a lot of people walked in 20 minutes uh 20 minutes in but from my perspective that's actually a positive because if they had been in sync probably those people wouldn't have walked in at all yeah. but there <laughs> so, is there is a sort of like right. a, a 
a seesaw. On one hand, it's like in this particular event, we were under capacity. Uh, yeah. The expected uh, uh, attendance was 8,000 people. And I think over three days, I think we had, that's actually the, because the, there were what, 2,000 people on Friday. It was probably just over twice as many on Saturday. So it got, I think we were in that range roughly. Yeah. Um, yeah. On one hand, so we didn't have this thing of queuing and hoping that you're going to get a seat oh, at the large. And you can always just wander right yeah. in. Yeah. Everybody got a seat. And um, that part, thankfully, was good. Once we get to like normal capacity, mm. which is what I'm expecting that's going to happen in Seattle, it's going to become uh, problematic probably because then the staggering becomes even more annoying because you can't just leave, go check out the other thing and come back. Then somebody mm -hmm. else is going to be in your seat <laughs> in the first panel. So <laughs> I actually found staggering not so great. I did miss out on other things because I figured if I'm going to be running between between two things, I'm actually seeing neither. So I kind of, you know, it was a heartbreaking choice, but I had to kind of like, okay, I'm sticking with this one. So I, for example, I missed out the Q&A of James Cromwell because it was staggered against the lower deck. Oh, but oh lower deck panels like I He's the guy yeah. that taught Jordy about leak. <laughs> oh, leak. No, and just I generally guess. speaking, he, That's funny. He, he hasn't done a convention in over 20 years. So yeah, at guy. least I'm glad that I got to see him at his autographing table and during photo ops because that was a uh, very nice. He's he's a true gentleman. James Cromwell is a wonderful human. I've gotten the chance yeah. to uh, meet him a few times at galas for animal rights and things like that, mm -hmm. that I go to, and I'm hoping he'll be at the next one in a few months. A Quark's uh, but, cousin. Hmm? Quark's cousin. So you got to meet him at gala. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very nice. Oh my gosh. Very, Ryan, what you have you done? almost dropped Larry. You almost, Larry almost <laughs> went somewhere else. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Have <laughs> but this is when people get really excited. They, they like it when we say nice things, but they especially like it when we battle it out. So we have you know, on one side, Muhammad's saying he likes the staggering. On the other side, Marina says, nay. Well, Larry, <laughs> what say you? I didn't, I was kind of out of it. This is the first time I think I'd ever done a con <laughs> where I didn't have any stage responsibility. And part of that was because um, one of the things that wasn't, I knew it wouldn't affect the fan facing side of this, but in house Reed was turning over a lot of employees that were dealing with vendors and talent and all of that. Mm. And at one point I was supposed to have a panel and then our person was let go that was tied to the booth and then they weren't because I was dealing with the sales side, not talent side for once. And at first I was upset by that, but then I thought, you know what? This is going to be a case where I can just go and be footloose. And I still didn't go see anybody over in the signing area as much, but um, I, I only concentrated on the, I wanted to see the big, the big panel show, the spotlight shows for the shows. I wanted to see the mm -hmm. prodigy and the lower decks and the um, strange, strange new worlds World. panels. Yeah. yeah. And let the rest of them kind of go. And what was, um, yes, so I wasn't, I don't think I ever tried to get into another, because that was two a day, and the rest of the time I was trying to panel booth and then and then actually run around and see things. And the last day I did some live interviews. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I noticed that, and I, I didn't think about it, but I see both your points. Mom, yeah. and I can, as a presenter, I can totally see what you liked <laughs> about that. It's the like if you get anybody in for any amount of time, it's good, but it's I frustrating can. for yeah. But it, it can only really work if you do have an opportunity to get yes. up, go check it out and come back. Um, comparing it to, to, say, Mission New York, Mission New York had five things happening at the same time. Uh, if, wow, if what? Some of them were slightly staggered. Oh, it was insane. There was about 60, 65 panels. And you can, you know, I saw 10 <laughs> over three days. But didn't you say that was like overkill because the numbers were so small that there'd be like 10 people in every panel and you're saying no there support. were no three people in it. it was insane and what's more it's like the, when you they would hit predictable choke points which is what you call spot, spotlight events you mm -hmm. know something happening in the main theater yeah everybody would want to be there and you can imagine the incredible you know that you know the can i say that i don't know i, I don't know how much are you, are you talking about traffic yeah. in the corridor or are you Chris talking words. about there was nobody no, left over to go to the little panels no, yeah, everybody yeah, because yeah. you know like you have a tng panel in the middle of friday you know a everybody wants to go to tng panel b everybody wants to go to tng, TNG panel c everybody wants to go to tng panel so the, 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 the cues were extraordinary i mean it got to a point where anything going on in main theater was attracting so much attention they were they were like if you're getting in you're not getting out because if you're getting up from your seat somebody else is taking it they had to come up so with it's like a, a hall uh, h san diego thing then it's sort of like they had to come up with a, ba a bathroom policy by Sunday at Mission New York. 
And I was wow. like, is this kindergarten? <laughs> What's going on here? Because literally they would not even let you out uh, to, to use wow. the well, like, are, But are you also saying that when everyone did that, it was like, what's the point of having sidebar panels because no one's in them? Well, I think the people who have never been to a convention got a very wrong impression at Mission New York because they were like, well, I paid for the ticket. It's sort of like going to a play and discovering that all you can do is just go over there and get mm. yourself, I don't know, popcorn okay. and just stand in the corridor and listen to the music from the outside. <laughs> um, so thankfully, Chicago was not like that. But again, Chicago was under capacity. They could probably easily fit, you know, at least twice as many people in that space. Well, Muhammad said it was very nice and airy. It actually was rather pleasant. I know some people probably did not enjoy necessarily the distances that you had to walk between like the photo booths if you wanted to go to versus, you know, main mm. theater. But Ooh, um, I saw a lot of people I, complain about that online, but I thought that was exaggerated. Like, they weren't I, that far. Yeah, I actually, I found it rather pleasant. People don't exaggerate you... online, Muhammad. I'm going <laughs> to correct you there. No, but it was nice in the sense that you actually had space to move around. It yeah. wasn't like <clears throat> at the large Comic Con when everybody is like this in the aisles. No, not yeah. at all. It was very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, I think what did... added to that perception was if you if you were in the the Hyatt or the Marriott, you had to get all the way. Yeah. You know, from the, they were connected. You'd have to go outdoors, and that's great with those bridges. But mm -hmm. I think the feeling was that after you walked all the way from your hotel, it was already you know. So that just added to that feeling of yeah. But you know, if you compare it to Vegas, where you technically was like, well, we all are in the same space. The walk from say Panima mm -hmm. Tower. Yeah. or masquerade tower all the way through mm -hmm. that exactly. large convention corridor exactly. until you finally reach the main theater i think that was actually just as long if not longer so yeah. it's all it's kind of like perception yeah. of, all... of yeah so yeah but overall the, the layout was very nice it was very reasonable they had the main theater on one end of the core of this large i don't know that's not a corridor like what do they call it the promenade that that atrium in the middle of the the uh, I like promenade. I think that works. Yeah, that works, right? Uh, and then you had everything else: the show floor with uh, all the vendor booths, uh, food areas, uh, photo ops, and uh, autographing. So Ooh. yeah, well let's Actually, let's talk yeah, about that a little exhibits. bit more in a bit. But real quick, um, Malik Salongo, you may know her. She says that'll do, pig. That'll do in reference to our good buddy, oh, Mr. Yes. James Cromwell. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. A little word to the wise. Uh, he likes to be called Jamie. So if you call him Jamie, he'll think oh. you're an old pal. Um, but so basically, Larry, sounds to me like you're on Team Muhammad there with the uh, staggering. That's where <laughs> we're putting you. Uh, Anne Marie, yeah. are you are you Team Marina or Team Muhammad? Do you like the staggering I, or no? I just, I honestly, I don't know because I went to two things. I went to William <laughs> Shatner. Was, I just like that to tracks. socialize. I like to socialize. I just like to go to the vendors room for hours and then um, see that's that way I get to see everybody and then whatever's going on after hours. But um, then I went to William Shatner, obviously with my parents. And then I, I hadn't seen him since he's been back from space. And then I went to uh, Lambda Quadrant Jackie Cox for her drag, the first drag show. And it was cool because like since Jackie's also on RuPaul and Paramount, that's on Paramount Plus, I felt like they really had great photographers and great sound. And they, they showed a really awesome clip from RuPaul where um, Whoopi Goldberg is like a sustainer and talking about, and they even like mentioned Star Trek conventions. Um, but she did some amazing, amazing numbers. And Ian Alexander and Anthony Rapp were in the audience as well as cool. like, it was a packed house. And then, um, oh, like it was so cute. One little girl who was like five went to give her a tip at some point and they like talked about what her favorite Star Trek person is. Um, spoiler, it was Murph. It was just like the cutest <laughs> thing. It was really like Star Trek Definitely. fans of all ages. And also um, like Kelly Wright did such a moving talk about like what Star Trek meant to them um, growing up nice. and everything with TNG and I was looking around there literally was not a dry eye in the house and then I think the other amazing moment um, which I'll get I'll just do a spoiler at the end Jackie sang um, the Enterprise theme song and people in the crowd were singing along and got out lighters <laughs> it was like, as they should yeah it was out of control um, so it was a super super fun event and Lambda Quadrant was just like completely not that they not that they weren't already blossomed, but like totally blossoming with like tons of crowd coming by the booth. And it was just really wonderful to see. Yeah. One and, of them is in the live chat right now, Stephanie K. Sorry, hey. Mohammed, did you say something? I was I was gonna I was gonna build on one thing that Marina mentioned just in passing, but I thought it was a really big positive about the main like floor where the both the <laughs> signings were happening as well as the tables. But uh, what was, one thing that was nice about that was the food was there in the same area. Yeah, so, there were like, bars. You, 
yeah, yeah, it was all right inside, which was really wonderful. So you could walk right inside and like on the one oh, yeah. side, there, there's there's food. On the other side, there's all the all the vendors. But it was great. There was, a, there was an, uh, an upper cafeteria. Mm-hmm. And like the first day, for example, I sat with my friend Carrie and, and it's like it's on a ledge and you could look down and you could see yeah, like the lines queuing up for whole wheat. And you could see the people flying up for Chase. Yeah. It was a beautiful view. Like, that they don't have anything like that yeah. in Vegas. I mean, that was no. definitely a significant yeah. problem. And they had something that I've Chicago. only ever seen at DST so far. Actually, they would have the right sort of like center of the, the show floor. There was a little stand that was selling alcohol right there. And I've seen yeah. that there were beer carts at the DST yeah. like right in the middle of the, the show floor. You just go up and they would have some kind of drink. And in this oh, case, yeah. they actually tricky fight them so you get. You could get like the Mugato mule and, uh, you know, just generally. Oh, a Mugato mule? Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fun. So I, um, I went up that, that, up that second floor. Um, yeah, great view from there. Yeah, where the corner. I mm-hmm. did a couple of just live stream, just pans. But it, yeah. It, yeah, it's the signing. I saw one. And all the Yeah, vendors, I started sharing. But also the museum. They had the Strange New Worlds exhibit mm-hmm. and the Skull collection from the cruise. You can were see there. And I guess us. they'll they'll travel all year long. But um it was. Mm-hmm. And so it was, and the gate there, the gaming area was supposed to be adventures and STO down there. And it was kind of undersigned. I didn't even realize it was there until I was like, oh, why is Thomas Marone standing over there by that screen? So, oh, oh, oh he's there on he, that's business. Oh, that's working. Oh, that's a game area. It is. And I vaguely remembered there being a game area, but it was, there was some slip ups or something, but it was fine that people found their way over there. They, you know, there was mm-hmm. something to do over there, but, nice. but yeah, it was, um, you no. Know, it was definitely like a three deck high bay. It was like being on a real shuttle craft uh, hangar deck. You know, speaking of Marone, uh, Sorok's sister, Sorok Lofton's sister's name is Marone. And she has an online shop where you can get all kinds of great stuff, with great designs that she makes called abyssiniankiosk.com. So check that out, everybody. Larry, Chuck A uh, comments, quote, I've met Larry a few times at STLV so great to talk to don't know how you pulled the wool over his eyes but that was a nice one (laughs) also (laughs) larry had a wonderful booth larry had a really fun booth next to dan and bill from trek geeks and um he was there with terrace's business partner for trek is it trek tour yeah terrace and i had not seen each other in that so that was a thing so we had vegas trek last year but it was like at half strength and then Mm -hmm. things died down and there's been a couple of little events, but the, the Monday, the, the premiere for the 4K motion picture, it was the first time I'd really seen a lot of people in four, five, six years in the, in the LA. I thought community. you were going to say the first time I've seen a lot of people in 4K too. <laughs> like, <I> don't know. <laughs> it kind of was like that, you know, everybody was 3D. Yeah, in was real great. life rather than but on that, the screen. But yeah, but, but at Chicago, there were tons of just all the people that have come to my, to Trekland from Tuesdays or from Life Support Live. There were, I was, there were, I don't know, five or 10 people a day that it was like, oh, look, we're finally, I had Portal 47 members that I'd never met live. But the other thing that a lot of stuff, it was like, you could, you could see the logistics and all that early. But the thing that I was not ready for that was interesting and it kept playing out different ways. And I heard this from some of the licensee vendors and all is for, there were a lot of Chicago people that you go, well, duh. There were Chicago and Detroit and Twin Cities people and even like Kansas City, St. Louis. We don't and get those in Vegas. Not that it's in, huh? It we don't was, get those as much in Vegas. And yeah, it's, yeah. So it's, and it's not that it makes a difference, but as someone who's used to Vegas or larger Comic-Cons or something, it was great to see them. And they were mm-hmm. new. And a lot of the vendors were like people. It was like, I don't, I don't mean this in a bad, they were less savvy, less online savvy. So all of, everything was like starry eyed Christmas morning, or they were people that had either never been to a con or they were people that hadn't been to one in 15 years. Yeah, but they're like I sitting in Chicago those. and they're like, well, there hadn't been a Trek con in 15 years. And they, what they mean is that I get in my car and I drive an hour or two. And the well, see, idea that's a that huge this was endorsement. the national- that's the a huge endorsement for these missions. Live con, uh, uh, licensed con, like that wasn't in their rate. They didn't care. They didn't know. And it didn't really matter. But it was weird how they just saw it as, well, look, we finally got a con back in Chicago that was worth yeah. going to. And it was awesome. But it was really funny to me. Like to step, if, I mean, if you got yourself to Vegas, you kind of had the idea that this was the big national thing. Right. You didn't like accidentally stumble into Vegas, into STLV. And that was the thing. And it, and it, 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 there was no downside to that. It was just fun to watch that, but it was great to see so many people back in, but you could tell there were a lot of 
50 something and 60 something fans walking around that go, well, there hadn't been anything since 07 because they're all focused on, you know, like live and they're not part yeah. of the online world. And that's good. But we we sure got them. We did our best to get them you know, get mm-hmm. them there. And that yeah, sounds like what's so brilliant about these new uh, Star Trek missions is that, I mean, I always look at it from a different point of view, which is this gives us an excuse, those of us who go to these conventions, to go to different cities. Whoa, and well, now we're going to go to Chicago. Now we're going to go to Seattle. Next, we're going to go to wherever, right? But the other thing is, is that there are a lot of people in these cities that don't go to conventions or haven't been in a long time. And they're going to get, like you said, uh, Larry, the, these starry-eyed people that are like, wow, I finally get to see Patrick Stewart in person, or I finally get to see Will Wheaton. Everybody loves to say his <laughs> name like that. Um, but that's really cool. And, and Mohammed, yeah. you look like you wanted to jump in on that as well. The... Oh, I, was, I, was, I was just thinking that I completely agree with it. I mean, I, I met up with a friend of mine from graduate school who lives in Kankakee, Illinois. She had never been to a Star Trek convention at all. I mean, I don't, I don't think the thought of even going to one had ever crossed her mind. But she yeah. she'd watched uh, TNG. She'd watched TV Series 9. She'd watched a little bit of the current series, but not so much. But I told her I was coming up for this uh, event. She said, oh, I'll come with you. I was like, oh, absolutely. That'd be wonderful. And she loved it. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. Like, I dragged her over to meet Walter Koenig. And she was like... Oh my God. It's like, he's just a guy and he's interested in you just as much as you're interested in him and things like that. She actually texted me the day after she was just there for Friday. She texted me the day after saying, I'm still on this like high after yesterday. I had this afterglow of positivity. Yeah. That's I, a I saw several, a I saw several win. comments in the Facebook group. So people are like, I can't get over it. It's like, can we please go back? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> You're like, Muhammad, now you like get this? it. Yeah. Well, Pardon? here's something, though, to consider is that uh, on one hand, you're absolutely correct. The fact that it's a traveling show certainly exposes a much, much wider audience to what exactly a Star Trek convention mm-hmm. is. The only downside to that, of course, is that 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 atmosphere that develops when you have yeah. uh, an event in a specific spot where, you know, like like Dragon Con, even though it's huge and it's in multiple locations, but it has this vibe, it's atmosphere, because it's also like a, a thing that has been created and grown over years. And exactly what we have in Vegas with STLV, whether it was in Hilton, now it's in Rio. And this year we're going to have an interesting event, you know, experience with having it in Bally's. But, you know, that's going to be missing, actually, if, if there's like a new show moving to a different, like there is no single watering hole. There is no one spot where we know there's going to be meetups exactly right there. You can kind of tell people like, well, you want to experience the fandom, please come on in. We're going to have this thing. It's all kind of spontaneous fan gatherings, which I got to attend probably about 10 of them during this this weekend. But it was all a little bit sort of like bated breath last moment because like we want to meet up i know there's going to be folks that i know through this group or this podcast or whatever but where we're going to do it how we're going to do when are we going to do it (laughs) whereas vegas sort of like already grew this thing where we know we're going to have a landing party we know there's going to be this thing on saturday night and so on and so forth so it's obviously to for those people who are consistently go to conventions that probably would look like a downside They'll look at it like, well, we're going out to Seattle. Never been to Seattle. What are we doing in Seattle? Where do I go? Where do I meet? Um, whereas, again, the the positive thing is, of course, that we're going to get new blood. Mm-hmm. Larry, you were going to ask Muhammad a question. It seemed. So I, you're, so your friend that came with you, who was and on you the met her too. Club. I remember. Thank you for that. Huh? <laughs> you met her too. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, did did she say you were doing? You were saying some highlights, and that she was on a glow the next, on a high the next day. Did she say mm. what did she, do you get the feeling or did she mention like what was the biggest surprise? Like there, I, I have this idea oh, I've heard there are a lot of Star Trek fans, what I call the armchair fans, and they don't they either because of distance or they just think there's I mean, I've heard from people that were fans, but they'd never go to a convention because they, they thought you had to have a costume to go. They you had to own a uniform <laughs> to get in the door or something. Yeah. And they're oh. like, oh, I couldn't go. Well, I don't do. have anything to wear. But I'm just curious, like, what was the yeah. biggest surprise she came away with after, or did she have one, really? Did the she the one that she mentioned was just in, how incredibly friendly and how much of a community it was. That's the thing she said first, I mean, more than anything else. And, you know, she was referring not just among the fans, but even among the talent, too, and things like that. That was the thing <laughs> that at least she reported to me as, as just off the charts for her. I mean, she expected things like that. Like she went to the Enterprise panel and she enjoyed that. But that was more like, I mean, that's the kind of thing you could potentially see on YouTube or something like that. So that wasn't... 
that wasn't as earth shattering for her where but the vibe and just everybody's so excited and it's like it's dr Amory seagull come give me a hug no. you know things like that it's just everybody's Nobody so happy to see each other and so what? Cel- yeah come on i said that <laughs> <laughs> everybody's just so happy to see each other and so happy to see the fans and uh, sorry and see the talent and the talent are happy to see the fans it's just mm-hmm. it's just so positive that's what struck her mm. thanks for asking you know, so I just, I, I'm just always, you know, sociology. I'm just always curious what people in a certain thing, you know. Isn't yeah. that the coolest thing when you talk to somebody that's at their first convention mm-hmm. and you and you just kind of like, it's almost like bringing a five-year-old to Disneyland. You want to like live vicariously through their eyes, you know, and you're like, look at, do you know who that is? That's LeVar Burton. And they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. You can go oh my gosh. to him if you I want. I was like blushing when I walked by Sid and, and Walter. For on Friday, I was like, Oh my god, they're so close. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's impossible not to smile when you walk by. Hmm. Who makes and see? I didn't, I didn't, who makes you smile the Heidi. most? Oh, go ahead. Me, I don't know. All of I, you, who, who, all of them, when you walk you by somebody, see. who is it that just makes you smile the most? Ray and Marie, <laughs> oh, yeah, Larry. <laughs> no, um, I mean, actually, like really everybody including the fans yeah. and like people at booths and everything and it was, it was it was so wonderful to take a step step back and just like watch everyone you know from online and all the different things talking to each other and being like I feel like virtual has really helped that where everybody yeah. knows each other better after talking constantly for two years it was really sweet to watch it was really wonderful just meeting people who we talked to so much online but hadn't met in person. So like Tierney yes. Heatman, for example, I never, I never met her in person, but there she was. And like, yeah, she looks just like she does in the Zoom. Go figure. You know, things like that. <laughs> we should all just walk around the convention with like a rectangle around <laughs> yeah. us yeah. so we can recognize <laughs> us. Better. Oh my God, I'm cosplaying virtual check on. Yeah. Did it uh, throw okay. anybody? I, I guess I knew this, but it didn't dawn on me until I got there. They have an app, obviously, and there's signage. Yes. But it, did it throw anybody that they didn't mess with? They, I'm sure they saved a ton of money and felt much greener for it. But there weren't any like paper programs or paper no. or pamphlets or anything. Uh, anyway, no, and it's a good thing because they were changing and adjusting as the convention go on, as right. conventions, as it normally happens at many conventions. Uh, one thing to note is that, and that is something that um, ReadPop will have to kind of address, I think, is that there was this miscommunication between what was being said by customer service, what was being posted in the app, what was being posted on the convention Mm. website, because there were multiple occasions where all three were contradicting each other. Um, And um, as the convention were ongoing, I saw complaints and actually came across uh, two of those things myself where then, you know, we were said, well, here's the schedule for autographing, for instance, um, and you show up and the person is actually not there and nobody knows where they're going to be, you know, and so on, or just directions of how to do certain things. They, um, thank goodness, Epic was there. I really like the when Epic is, is doing mm-hmm. photo ops and is just generally used as a ticketing service because they also can do autographs as well. Um some people would stand in line for somebody and then discover as they get to the table that you can only get the autograph if you pre-purchase the ticket. And there were no signage, nothing ever mentioned that some of the actors will actually have that limitation, that it's not the usual cash as you would have at, say, a Comic-Con where you go up to the you know, table, give the money and get the autograph. So that was a, a little bit uh, frustrating, but I'm sure it's one of those things that will get ironed out as, you know, as we get to the next show. Also, mm-hmm. by like being a regional convention, a lot of people I talk to are like driving for the just one of the days. So if that's the right. case, then they really need to make sure that it's specific, like very specifically stated so that they have time to choose. Yeah. Right. Oh, something, something happened, actually. They adjusted the um, uh, schedule where certain things were like they released, okay, here's the schedule. Obviously, it's a preliminary version of the schedule, mm-hmm. but people kind of had the idea of, okay, you know, uh, Prodigy is going to be on Sunday morning and Lower Decks is going to be on Saturday morning. So like, like the basic, you know, main mm-hmm. points. And then I know that we've caused quite a bit of a, it's like, oh, what happened to the Picard schedule? Originally it was supposed to be on Saturday afternoon and then poof, it's gone. They moved it to a different time and different day. So those people who were specifically planning, okay, I'm going to be there and I really want to <clears> go <throat> for Picard. They were like, okay, great. I guess I'm missing this because that's no longer happening then. So mm-hmm. unfortunate. I do want to point out very quickly that uh, Galenda says, quote, 
I got the cat's nails trimmed and capped without anyone bleeding, David Gregory. I'd say that's a good day. So everybody <laughs> be aware of that. Uh, oh, congratulations good. for the good day, Galinda. And uh, I do want to point out, though, uh, we are kind of touched on this earlier. You guys mentioned that there were like the three levels and you can look down at, at the convention. But for those in of the us vendor that, area, the vendor mm -hmm. signing area. Yeah. yeah. For those yeah. of us, and, and I knew this because for those of us that stayed home, you guys were po posting pictures all day, every day. And it was so cool. It's like I honestly didn't miss the convention at all because I saw it anytime I wanted. I could get, I could see who was there. I could see smiling faces. Uh, you know what I mean? Like we, I see groups of friends with other groups of friends colliding. You see these cool pictures. Larry's posting videos. People are sharing news items. Honestly, you guys were keeping us all informed to the point where it was almost as if I was like halfway at the convention, like, like I was at the convention, but I stayed up in my room half the time. That's kind of what it, <laughs> or I was getting work done or I was Which at the coffee shop. Sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so really what you guys were doing, I mean, you, you may not realize it, but it, you actually made it much more fun for all of us to see everything was going on. Tons of smiling faces, all these group photos, all the information on the panels and the announcements. But there are a couple more things I want to talk about. Personally, I want to hear more about number one, Muhammad, I know you got something for sure to throw in there. Uh, actually, go ahead if you if it's before I was going to mention this maybe where you were going to go. There were two things I liked about the big panels. I want to talk because we've been talking a lot about the vendor area and photos and things like that. But I want to talk about something about the big panels. Sure. Number one is that for just about all the big panels, I mean, at least all the ones I saw, I heard Picard didn't have this, but I wasn't at the Picard one. So I don't know. For all the big panels, as you walked in, they handed you a poster. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a full size poster, but a, like a, yeah. a sort of mini poster. Hey, that, yeah, that is cool. I didn't know that. That was cool. super cool. And it's just like, okay. And, that's, and it's incentive to actually go to the panel. So I, you could cheat and just go and, and like, because they just kind of stack them on the side. You could probably grab the others if you missed it. But it was incentive to go because like, hey, you'll get a free like lower decks poster, a free product. Nice. Yeah, super right. cool. The other thing I liked with the, the big panels. Oh, yeah. There's the oh, product. Hang one. on. I'm going to spotlight that. Yeah. Before, Muhammad. Pull it up, Marina. Thanks. So that's that's the prodigy one cute they did not surprisingly once be speaking of the only one since i was missing uh prodigy oh. i was uh, a little bit bummed so i wanted to kind of ask me like maybe some of my friends maybe somebody picked up an extra one and apparently the only panel the only spotlight panel they did not do that so that there's a strange new worlds yeah the only one wow. they did not do that Pretty. was for some reason picard so picard. okay there. so i didn't miss any then no, was no, not not. because because at this at the um where was and I forward. when they had swag bags? I did and this. Monday night. So at WonderCon. At WonderCon. Oh. Um, no, at the pop-up. I'm sorry. At the pop-up for the 10 Forward in LA, they had mm -hmm. swag bags. And one of the things was a tube, a rolled up nice tube of the uh, Confederation logo from Picard's alternate. So it's That's like they fun. had the thing. They had a master print. You know, they could have just printed more of those and had them. But they, yeah. if nothing else, but they didn't. Somebody else, incidentally, on Twitter picked up that the lower decks one kind of reminiscent of the uh, Wrath of Khan. Con. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good call. The other thing I, I like. They said that, and then someone took it. It's for Freeman. <laughs> they were like, very every, nice. Every season of lower decks has been a takeoff. Like the first season was the ship flying, like the motion picture teaser, that one. Mm -hmm. And that the uh, the one with has badge or has the broken up Delta black looks like the black Spock teaser from three. Oh, so, yeah. Anyway, with a peanut hamper in the middle. Yes. Yes. Peter hamper in the middle. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Muhammad, you had, guys had way too much fun, by the way. On yeah. their the other thing I liked, which they did is that the moderators would do a significant line of their own questioning before opening it to audience questions. And personally, I, I just thought that was useful because it, it just made sure that, that you know, the quality of questions was pretty high to start because i mean generally speaking with audience questions is a little bit more variant so you have some like awesome questions and you have some like okay whatever <laughs> questions so yeah. it was nice having like a good 20 minutes of like here's some pre-prepared thoughtful questions and that was especially important for example for the discovery panel the reason being mm -hmm. they had some questions that ken mitchell was able to prepare and answer for because 
He can't, oh, I mean, given nice. his current condition, he Very couldn't nice. actually sit there and respond. And if it had just been audience questions, he wouldn't have been able to answer anything I mean, unless it was just a very, very quick answer. So I love that. that. Really That's nice. really cool. You yeah, know. they prepared them and he clearly had pre-prepared his answers. He had a very like significant responses to those questions. So that was awesome. Hmm. That's, that's really classy. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, so what other things, so we had uh, the, the bird's eye view of the vendor's room that, that does sound really cool. Cause then you can kind of map out where you want to go. And if there's somebody weird, you're like, I don't want to go over there. I'm going to stick on this side. Look, there's that dude in the don't red tell shirt. People my secret. Yeah. And, uh, so there's that, uh, <laughs> you're saying that you like to have people ask the questions, uh, ahead of time, or at least the first half of the panel, the, the, the jury's still out on the staggering. What else was good? that you think is specific to mission Chicago or the Star Trek missions. Uh, Anne Marie, do you well, got, do you have well, anything for us? Was, Besides there was the no uh, line, there was no line at Starbucks, which was a significant <laughs> improvement from SPLE. It's that whole like under capacity thing. A lot of stuff was very much accessible. Yeah. Thankfully. Do you think there'll be a giant line next year at the Seattle Starbucks? <laughs> I actually was wondering that. <laughs> well, there'll be 18 starts in Seattle is Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. There'll but be 18 can, can we... yeah, Starbucks in the center. Yeah, no, this is not obviously specific, specific to Chicago. It's just that we're seeing this for the first time in Chicago, but I'm sure Seattle is going to have its own selection. Can we talk about the vendors? Because even though I, again, the folks who've been to Comic-Con crowd, you know, said, oh, it's kind of looking empty. But we did have a very, very nice selection of, of stuff. We had a couple of old favorites, if you will, those folks who, if you've gone to conventions for the past 20, 30 years, you'll recognize them, you know, like Intergalactic. Intergalactic was there. Granted, they didn't have uh, an enormous booth like they normally bring to Vegas, but they had, you know, the usual nice stuff, some, some uniforms, pins, patches, that sort of thing. And then, of course, you had a whole bunch of licensed folks, which made it very interesting because some of the stuff, the boots, oh my God, I cannot pronounce the name of the company, but it's the same company that produced the boots for Discovery. And they made an actual product that you anybody can buy in two for colors. $400. And, and that was, no, yeah. It was a con but discount the, of $47. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the actual, uh, the actual thing. And of course, you know, we have uh, the usual favorites like fan sets, for example, who brought some very nice uh, mm -hmm exclusive pins for the, uh, for the oh that's actually that's something that was specific to uh let yeah. me see if i can find Star so Trek can wines which yeah. was there uh, yes and they premiered the romulan ale bottle yeah. that was exciting now i asked they said they haven't decided yet what kind of wine or spirit it's going to be but they will probably know by vegas so that's going to be interesting to see and um yeah that was fun yeah, uh, my favorite, won an, my Marina, favorite did you win an easter egg hunt Oh, I'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Remind me if I get sidetracked, okay. but I absolutely have to say because that was my favorite booth of the for the on the floor probably. And an uh, Easter Lou and John, hunt? I love fan sets, but I have to say this one just took, completely took my breath away. Exo Six brought oh. prototypes yeah. of all upcoming figures for the next probably two years. And it was absolutely extraordinary. There was Commander Cruz, and there was, uh, you know, nice. Mirror Spock, Regular Spock, and you had Emperor Zerzu, and you had, you know, Tuvok. My God, Tuvok looks like exactly like like Team Russ. Blew my Crazy. mind. Yeah, and you had uh, something very interesting. You had Riker and Jordy, two variants. One was uh, the screen one, and one was. Um, I forget what the word they use, but basically it's it's the color of the uniform, the way you perceive it on the screen, and then the actual oh, color nice. of the uniform. That's that was amazing. pretty amazing. So there was I was just looking and I bumped into Nanjin and I said, This is absolute that it blew my mind. That was the most incredible experience with the stuff they had. Um Locutus, Locutus of Borg with a Borg uh, regeneration chamber background. Yeah mind-blowing i'm telling you uh so yeah oh as far as that uh easter hunt so <laughs> on yeah, sunday what? morning i was walking through the showroom <laughs> floor i cannot remember where i was heading and uh i passed by a plastic egg you know and it gets kind of like well there's a lot of stuff on the floor because it's a yeah. giant you know <laughs> concrete I love and metal this. box this is so cool and it just kind of registers like well they're just there you know maybe it's a piece of garbage for all i know and i'm passing by one of my uh friends uh of one of the vendor booths says if you see any plaster eggs those are actually easter eggs there's something tricky inside uh they j literally just tweeted about it so and 
and lo and behold, I actually see another one. So I grabbed it. It was by uh, Volante booth. And inside was a Dr. Tana, uh, a San Diego exclusive pin. And <laughs> so I'm like, I have to let the people know. So I started be posting because like, if you see it, yeah, this is not, you know, just a piece of plastic. Grab it. They actually doing like an Easter Easter egg hunt. Who's they? right there in the middle? Of- uh, Repop. Repop. Huh? No, no, no. Repop. Oh. They actually they tweeted about it uh, from one of their um, okay. archivists uh, Twitter account. That's why it was it kind of like you had to spread the word because not everybody picked up on it. I guess it would have to That's be Repop. Brilliant. Otherwise, the Repop uh, janitors would start sweeping them all. <laughs> That's what. Yeah. OK. But that uh, was yeah. a, that was a fan sets to on a pin. Uh, I'm not sure who produced it, but it was done. I was told it was a San Diego exclusive. So let me show you the picture because I don't have the egg on me anymore so but that's cute. what it looked like oh that doesn't look like one of theirs okay no 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 no. it's but it was as, as exclusive mm-hmm. so you can only find these like on ebay right now they're not sold right, anymore right, right. <laughs> and, she's got um, a grumpy face because she's like yeah. wishing she was in a box instead of an somebody egg. uh somebody got a tendy inside somebody got a, a picard crest so it's all the exclusives oh all yeah the, i saw yeah. those picard family crest was so wow. cool. yeah so that was oh that i had was no fun. clue about that one <clears throat> the, the big want to say swap out for first names i heard about but i didn't hear about that oh yeah we got to definitely get to that in a bit do you want to say very quickly uh hello to rose m kirby out in the uk where it is way past most people's bedtime in the uk or way before their wake up time but thank you for sticking around rose we love having you here um boy we've just kind of gone all over the place, but I feel like there's still so much to cover. Uh, they, they made some announcements throughout. Those are cool. Um, they made some announcements throughout. I feel like we must have missed a bunch of them. Were there any, uh, Muhammad, did you catch some of the announcements yeah. that they made this, this weekend? Yeah. So, for example, uh, one of them we already kind of sideways brought up, which is that Peanut Hamper will make a return <laughs> in, mm-hmm. in Star Trek Lower Decks. They played for us uh, like a little clip from a Star Trek Lower Decks episode where they're playing some kind of equivalent of, of Dungeons and Dragons. It's called like Batlas and something else. I forget. Who no one can understand what the second word was. It's another, yeah. it's alliterative. It's a B something in Klingon. Yeah, it's like Batlas and... Something like that. Yeah. 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 Batlas and beefcakes. I don't know. But, uh, but then JG, <laughs> <laughs> JG Hertzler uh, is basically like the dungeon master narrator for that. So it's nice to see that he's coming Playing back. Mark, so, oh, he, yeah. has, he has no eye. So it's, yeah. 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 Oh, that's true. As Martok. Yeah. Good point. Because good point. the kids, the, the, the gang says, I'm amazed he's chancellor and he has time to get to. Right. Game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but boy Blair actually says, no, it's just a Ferengi knockoff. So you know, it's not an actual Martok. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Line too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the prodigy panel was lovely. Uh, they did mention that they are finishing up the last episode of second season. So they're at mm-hmm. 40 episodes as of yeah. right now. Yeah which is quite amazing. And they did show a scene that caused quite a lot of splash on Twitter from what I could see, because it was showing, you know, stuff that it's, you know, a piece from, from a, one of the upcoming episodes. And, um, yeah, and again, was, something to point was... out before every single panel in main theater, they said, you know, there will be exclusive information shared on the screen. So please, you can do regular photography, take pictures of, you know, guests on the <clears> stage, whatever, but the moment something goes on on the screen, everybody, please, you know, Oh yeah, I had, to, I had to hit cameras, some guy cameras was down, to film phones behind off. Me. I was like, Stop there, it. there was. I did not see the staff, but apparently there were people circulating, watching mm-hmm. for that, and they would oh. grab you if you if you filmed something or took pictures of something. Or uh, Mohammed would hit you. It's amazing <laughs> how Anson Anson can go from that smiley, warm, melt your heart <laughs> smile to this to the steely eyed Pike look and. There before they did that, they said he says, "All right, now we're going to do this thing here, and we're going to show you the first you know, uh, breach like, yeah, scene. The first breach there's, scene. There's pictures yeah. up, and there's time for cameras up, and there's time for cameras wow. down, and this is going to be one of them, you know. And it was like, here's the first bridge scene mm-hmm. of Strange New Worlds, and cameras wow. down, everybody. It's only wow, for wow. you, you know. Yeah. So, so, awesome. far, so far, I just I just saw the verbal descriptions because people were indeed curious. It's like, so what exactly did they show? So there's a description of something, but I've seen no pictures, scene, no stolen. It wasn't that video. exciting because we'd already seen pieces of it, like one yeah. with who are right. turning. We'd already seen some of that. That, that wasn't. I mean, it, it was, was okay, as much but it was the character interaction as it was looking at the set. But right, exactly. Yeah. But exactly. can we just point out that when Larry was mentioning uh, steely eyed, he looked really steely eyed. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> he was, was channeling Anson. <laughs> Yeah, he was practicing, or maybe Anson was channeling like, Larry. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. 
I do want to point out uh, that this is another news item that kind of just swept right under uh, last week, a few days ago, so much so that I, I had forgotten about it. James Callis is going to be in Star Trek. That's right. Picard. What and, and the thing is, I mean, this guy was, you know, my favorite oh, character yeah, in Battlestar Galactica, or as I like to call it, Battlestar Dramatica, or um, he was great. Uh, we loved him. But here's the thing is, I just see on Twitter now that uh, when I first saw Battlestar, which was just several years back, it wasn't when it first came out. My first thought was, God, that guy looks like a lot, a lot like Dr. Bashir, right? Kind of talks like him, you know. And he's also a doctor, you know, it's really kind of, you know, it kind of sticks out at you. But if you'll notice, uh, I'm clearly not the only one because yeah. if you'll notice, this oh is my gosh. Yeah. Yes, 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 point. I saw that. <laughs> oh my gosh, not Alexander. He says, today. Not James Callis. There we go. <laughs> this, this for is those amazing. of us, just in case. <laughs> Just in case there are the, uh, as Larry says, the armchair fans, <laughs> there are two separate people here. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's jump back for just a second. So uh, Marina mentioned the prodigy thing. So that what that little scene was, was essentially it was like a hologram flashback of. Um, oh, I'll wait till you show that. No, go ahead. Keep, keep okay. going. I'm just showing this. For the sure, fans. sure. It was a hologram flashback of of. Chicote going off on this mission to the Delta Quadrant and Admiral Janeway coming up and giving him a hug and saying, are you sure you want to do this? And he said, well, I know who, who I know who I'll call for help or something along those lines. And, that, and, then, the, and then the real Janeway walking through this hologram saying, why didn't you call me? <laughs> <laughs> it was very sweet. Yeah, I yeah. missed that. I missed the very beginning of the Prodigy yeah. panel. Oh, speaking of Prodigy panel, and it's actually something that's true of this entire uh convention yeah i saw yep. somebody say that this is probably one of more wholesome conventions they've been to is that there were a very high number of children yes. partly because yes we have a lot of new folk coming in and it just so happens that a lot of them like why not bring kids to this event and then of course specifically because prodigy is not a part of it a lot of kids are getting exposed to track and so from little little ones to like, you know, nice, you know, six through 13, I would say that probably was the bulk that we saw. And what was uh, very nice that that uh, by the looks of it, they were having a ball. Many of them were dressed up, whether their parents made them dressed up, but it looks like it was more like they actually wanted to do this. It was a, a lovely little girl, Beatrice, that she literally she I, I think, uh, you know, she, she actually came up to the microphone to ask a question uh, during the Prodigy panel. And after that, they actually said, OK, are there any more kids in line who want to ask questions? And they pulled them all up front so yeah. they could that that could be like a, a featured thing during the Q&A. Um, is Naomi Wildman. Yes, Naomi Wild. That's why yeah, I, I, I turned around. I turned around like this is amazing. She she is cosplaying Naomi Wildman dead on. Beautiful. Love Her it. mom was being oh. seven of nine. There were too. no there were no cameras on the question line, and I was way over at the side watching, so I just got silhouette. But it was cool how they start the questions. And there's four or five people, and there's a little, and you go like, oh, it's a little kid, and they're very, it, and she's very, you know, loud. I mean. She's very assertive. Oops. She's she's yeah. She had there. an she's opinion because and the minute Kate she's done, was it Kate said, "Hey, Kate, wait a minute!" Like the well, next yeah, Kate, Kate said, "Like yeah, I want to like, ask you a wait, question." Let's uh, anybody yeah. else? Yeah, ask you a question. No, no, no. But she, it, it got to the point where it, it actually made me laugh, you know. And it kind of ties into we started talking about this particular character, and then we moved on to something else. But Kate basically turned around and said, "I, I want to ask you a question. Who's your favorite character and why?" And of course, she says Murph yes. because he's cute. And can we please have a plushie? And the entire audience just went crazy. And I'm like, 90% of the people applauding are all adults without children. Yes. I can bet you anything because everybody <laughs> wants Murph merchandise. Of course. <laughs> of course. Papa Murph it, it and Brainy Murph. A joke, but not really because uh, like every kid, they, 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 so she says, wait a minute, before we have any more, any other you know, like grown people, are there any other kids in line? Let's yeah. have them first. So all the kids came up. So there were like, what, five or six kids in a row. Mm -hmm. From yeah. seven to twelve, which was mm -hmm. awesome, and they were all pretty much, yes, I'm Ryan from Oak Park, and I'm nine, and you know, and they'd say, and there was not like a wacky one in the in the bunch. They were no. all, and a couple times they were they all more normal. Uh, the, there was one, uh, one of the boys, uh, and I'm like, this is children's logic because you kind of like 
you know, kids think in their own way, I suppose. Mm -hmm. He came out and he said, well, and this was addressed to the creative. So uh, 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 I believe it was Kevin Hageman that was a part of the uh, uh, panel and uh, Ben Hibon. And he said, "Uh, you keep calling the main characters kids, but how can it be? You know, Jenkin Pond has facial hair brought the house down because they everybody thought done. it was yeah. the most funniest thing but yeah to a kid it's like if a is a and b is b and how right. come he has you know uh, amazing third. that was that was great fun uh, and it was, dan hegman says oh, well was dan. sorry it was dan yeah he well i well i'll tell you a story in a minute but he said uh he said well now you know he's a tellerite and tellerites just age differently than humans do. And and Kate was jumping and she's like, that's right. For all we know, tellerite, you know, te- tellerites are born with hair, you know, born with teeth or something. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> she, she'd been that would have been a good point, had. though. Oh. That would have been a good point. Um, all the kids I do wanna, have excellent I, questions. Sorry, I just want to give a very quick shout out to our friends over at Orville Nation who are in the live chat. Hello, Orville Nation. I don't know if you're sticking around for the whole show, but we hope you do. Hopefully you didn't already leave because then you would have heard that shout out. No, they're still there. Hey, Orville Nation. Good to see you. That like Uh, picture though is like rapidly becoming iconic. The picture of like Naomi Wildman from behind, like with the spotlight on Kate talking to her from the stage and just like everybody else looking at them. It's, so cool. it, it was one of the best moments, honestly, because that was kind of like it became very prominent that, yes, it was always very cute when you had a kid at a, a Trek event go up and Speak ask a yourself. question and have an opinion. It would be obviously a fan. But here it's like it's, you know, legitimately now kids are part of this particular fandom and they are participating in conventions. So I'm curious to see how that's going to change other events that we have, you know, whether it's going to kind of like become now a thing where we'll see more children in Vegas because well, Vegas has been pretty much almost exclusively adult. We haven't had any children content in a rather long time. Right. First time in my well, life I, I've I ever heard somebody say we need to get more kids in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> well, come on. We, 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 but uh, I also think that's a factor of this whole thing that feeling regional or local and it's whether who cares if it's in the mindset of that area. And they just, you know, throw the kids in the car and roll down there for an hour, for, even if yeah. it's for a day. Yeah, Whereas if it's Vegas people. and it's national and you're getting on screen, you're getting on a plane and paying a kid's, you know, air ticket back and forth. Yeah, that's, Hold that that's up, Marina. Photo. Yeah, that's Hang the on. photo that everybody was talking about when Beatrice is asking the panel her questions. Wow, that's didn't, perfect. Didn't Dad Hageman say my my daughter's name's Beatrice? Uh, what or Ben? Or maybe ben one of them it. said i have her i have a close-up of her face if you want yeah to see her face. and and funny thing is like oh she's gosh. they says like my daughter's name is beatrice <laughs> and she just kind of like small pause and she's like yeah cool and just, just yeah, moves on yes. with her questioning <laughs> that was right she that matter of fact kid. sounds like okay. a kid all right okay. somebody did ask a similar question <laughs> that earlier in our live show we got you know we've been kind of all over the place but i but you reminded me that somebody actually did ask that question they said, and forgive me, whoever it was, I don't remember. Um, they asked, what was it like for kids there? You know, was there a lot to do for kids? Or uh, is this something that we think is going to be mostly for adults going forward? So they had they had a, a giant um, doll walking around. D-A-L, not, not D-O-L-L. Yes. <laughs> yeah, saw pictures of him around. everywhere. That was yeah. great. He was on the panel. Was, yeah, he was, he was on the panel too. But he was also like, there were specific yeah, times he you was, could go find him. And I never was speaking yeah. on the panel? No, he just, no, he just no, no, no. motion. He mind. Love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah, it there so also so like a Mickey like Mouse like or a Disney. Daffy Duck. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Basically, exactly. yeah. Yeah, there was an Perfect. area that was designated like cosplay and family central. And that's where, for example, like Dr. Aaron McDonald would did like a, a Q&A, for example, on science and Trek. So there, there were things like that. There wasn't so much like there was like a big coloring area or anything like that. But, the, but you yeah. know, the, there were things to do, but it wasn't not yeah. heavily so. I'm sorry, Larry. Yeah. I said that's the kind of thing that might evolve. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we want a coloring yeah. area. I th- yeah, no, but the, the, uh, the little thing that would... Um, the family HQ. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Aaron was actually doing like, you know, exper- experiments and it's like on, yeah. you know, that the kids could participate. It was specifically geared to younger audience. So they would be yeah. occupied doing something. And it was like yeah. very short ones. I don't think they were like, like 45 minutes that we got for the panels. I think it was like a 20 or 30 minute things. They go do the activity and then move on to the next thing. And I, oh, you know, it was also was really in the mentions, oh, but I don't think it was. It's kind of like the gaming area. I don't think they there were one of the drawdowns, I think, was uh, like signage. 
I don't think. Yeah. See, I missed that. I didn't get one of those. I wanted yeah. to get one for Alice, but and, my, and he was great. I got Alice. I mean, it, it's like a 3D walking cartoon. Mm -hmm. So awesome. They had a lot of fun with it on the on the panel. But I I think one of the and it's easily remedied. But I think there was a dearth of si enough signage. You know, and if something over there says come over here, then you get over here. There's nothing right there to say you are here. Uh, I mean, like they kept in the moving the game. There were like two gaming panels and they had them at one point mm -hmm. over here. But if you came up this way, you didn't know. And later on, they separated them. But that family HQ area, I mean, I remember intellectually reading about it, but I don't I don't think it was it was well masked off to, to where you went. Oh, if you didn't know about it, that you would stop and go, oh, well, let's hang here for a few minutes and maybe there'll be some you know, some family oriented, kid oriented thing. Maybe the, uh, maybe just having the, the presence of prodigy is what is going to be attracting the kids. Like mm -hmm. having this, this doll guy walking around, having a prodigy uh, panel, maybe they can also have like a, a prodigy room, you know, and th they can call the prodigy room. That's like the kid's room, right? It's for right. the prodigies. It's for like the kids and, you know, you know, there's right definitely here. something there. Um, Melissa Longo in the live chat says, ah, and Galinda says, ah. <laughs> but something all the, to remember that it's not exclusively kids thing. That's what, what kept me yeah. cracking up through the whole thing, because like this whole moment where everybody wanted the Murph plush, including adults. Yeah. So, of oh, I, some, here's a story for you. So Friday morning, Friday is when I did my extensive exploration of the vendor hall and did a lot of shopping. Uh, I went to the official merch store, which incidentally we do have to talk about because they had fun stuff there. Um, then um, I wanted to buy some t-shirts. So I got myself and I'm sure it's going to shock a lot of people. I got myself a Janeway t-shirt. Um, and I also said, and I would like the Murph one. And the gentleman at the at the uh, store kind of leaned over and said, we miscalculated. I said, what do you mean? He said, we only brought them in kids sizes. We didn't realize adults are going to be asking. For them. <laughs> oh, so they now. actually, they had to scramble. They had to put in an order for adult size t-shirts, you know, the usual from small to double X or triple X, whatever they had. And so they had, they posted a QR code at the, at the counter. So you could actually, you know, scan it and pre, you know, it will take you to the uh, website where you can pre-order an adult Amazing. size Murph shirt. <laughs> uh, well, but it so turned it, into a joke at the panel. I mean, the first kid said well, they didn't think about it with adults or, you know, they were just asking standard questions. And the first kid, when she said, well, who's your favorite character in Murph? And everybody Murph, had a ha, -ha. Yeah. And as they did that over and over again, it was Murph, 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 Murph. And, it's and like, Kate was like, well, why? And they said, well, he's cute. Oh, the, the, one of the boys said he has very nice black eyes. eyes. <laughs> Creepy. Oh, my gosh. That's my new favorite kid. But she, but they, were, they got off on that. So, so wait, so he doesn't that's really talk. He just goes, boop, 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 boop. and then the kid was like, I know. It was like, that's the whole point. And did, Ooh, did apparently, apparently Murph in second season, Murph mm -hmm. will yes. be trying to communicate. Oh, it's basically, how did they phrase it? He said, and Murph a actually, a Murph, yeah, <laughs> Murph, is, Murph exactly. actually does have something to say. He has information to impart. And that's going to be brought up in the second season some, in some fashion. There's more Murph in the second half of the first season that will be happening at the end of this year. But yeah. Anne-Marie, you were going to say something a few minutes ago. I don't know if you've lost it or oh, if you yeah, still... Oh, yeah, now I kind of forget. Well, we were talking about the merch It happens. Store because... Um, yeah, I think it was like before with kids stuff, but now I can't remember. Okay, well, let's we we don't have too much time left, so let's uh, get into a couple quick news items while we show you uh, Marina's Jordy bear. bear plushie. Oh my gosh, it was so uh, cute that he showed up at. Lord I think some people too. were literally buying them in bulk because it, that was a great success of the convention. Yeah. Well, and so, no, no, no less thanks to everybody on the uh, Lower Decks panel. All the actors were sitting there; they gave them one. That was yes. awesome that so they were right. all in cosplay. That That's crazy. what I was going to say. Is that they, um, uh, Jack Quaid even had the funny purple hair. <laughs> the purple hair looked it magnificent. Like literally... And everybody posted it for us. So we all got to enjoy it. It was, it, it was basically really cool. a, a very clear view of what, what Lower Decks would look like if somebody decided to make it into live action. It was perfect. Right. Right. That's exactly it. Yeah, it was perfect. And about halfway through that panel, it dawned. I was like, has any Star Trek cast ever showed up on a stage at a con in mass with their uniforms on? No, and it was, but and it, 
Yes. I've always thought that if myself as an actor, I was like, if I ever get into a Star Trek movie or series, I'm going to go to these conventions cosplaying my character. And I'm like, why doesn't anybody You're do this? Allowed. The fans would go nuts for it. I think they're specifically disallowed from doing that. That's, <laughs> my, that's my understanding, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make sense. Why well, I'm just, I always just, everybody's going to say, oh, I have to wear that every day and or pay me extra. But it's it's totally bass backwards with a with an animation because those they don't even see each other, much less. Yeah, that's right. Know, it's a hoot to go out like that. So it was like it's exactly opposite. Yeah, and, I think there was it actually came up during the panel when they said, like, mm -hmm. how is it working in on the and they're like, we're actually not like they're recording in their own closets. Well, they have been recording in their own closets as the pandemic right. went on. They've never been in the same recording studio. Some together. of them don't even know each other. There's that <laughs> there's that famous picture when they first did they recorded the first animated series. I mean, in 73, because Fred Bronson tells the story about they, they actually went to filmation to record Nemo and Shatner and D. And there's that picture of them all kind of gathered around with the script. Because after that, they were always recording mm -hmm. from their hotel. I mean, in the 70s, much less today, they were like, you know, recording from the road or whatever. And they weren't even they didn't even think about it. And they were halfway through. And Fred Bronson goes, wait a minute, I got to get a camera. We got to get you know, they wouldn't have done it if he hadn't happened to think about that. But that's how you know, that's how wacky it is. So, yeah, even today, they're off running around doing that. And people have home studios now. So they don't even think about going together. But the idea that they're out there and then they give. Then they give Jack the, the Tom Paris plate, which is hysterical. That was so hilarious. Loved it. And he just hugged Loved it, it the whole rest of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, very quickly, uh, Star Trek.com, we can just hit them up super quickly, but we pretty much covered everything they covered. This is Star Trek.com. They do uh, some features mm -hmm. every once in a while. Here's our buddy Jack Quaid as Boimler. <laughs> uh and, and they were also got, doing it there was also a video of them jumping up going lower decks lower yeah. decks yes. all that kind of stuff and during the great. during the panel he was presented with his own town paris commemorative plate <laughs> oh, and that cute. was hilarious right. oh my god look at this oh. murph murph yep yep there's our buddy murph but also look at this we have a rex a wood sighting right <laughs> here oh, and That's jeremiah rex. there's no yes, way i was gonna say rex. there's jeremiah in the background Who's that? This one right Jeremiah, here? Jeremiah, yes. Jeremiah with nice. the Janeway sofa. So uh, so Star Trek.com, if you want to get more information on what you may or may not have missed that we may or may not have covered, just go to Star Trek.com. It's there. It's um, there's another interesting news item that uh, actually let's go to this one here. Because no, let's do the other one because I have a feeling people are gonna have a lot to say about the other one. So here's this one right now uh check this out this is from our buddies at trekmovie.com captain pike saddles up in his first star trek new worlds novel entitled high country so they've already got a novel coming i think mm -hmm. when is it uh so we know the debut of the show is may 5th november november 8th is when this new novel uh oh, hits stores so i mean and maybe it'll be like a post season one kind of like sometimes Picard ones fit in between seasons well it, it says when, an, when yeah. an experimental shuttlecraft fails Captain Christopher Pike suspects a mechanical malfunction only to discover the very principles on which Starfleet bases its technology have simply stopped functioning okay. he so and his crewmates are forced to abandon ship in a dangerous maneuver that scatters their party across the strangest new world they've ever encountered hey that sounds like the murder planet doesn't it <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> but that's really cool so i'm oh, super Anna? excited about that sorry what'd you say Emery? how planets the serious one to be for voyager mm -hmm. so marina it seemed like you had already heard about this book yeah oh uh, same I, I read i read the news <laughs> yeah so I, I saw i saw this pop up of a, who i think trek movie shared it yeah so yeah interesting so to that's check new out. For those of you that, oh, and here is actually, here's the, the cool new cover. Uh, I'll pull that up. Here's the cover of the book. We already know what it mm -hmm. looks like. We already know what it's about. Now all we have to do is wait seven months. <laughs> I, guess, I guess they must have given early access to either the scripts or something, because otherwise I don't see how yeah. you can start writing the book. Oh, yeah. I think they always do that. Characters. They did the same, I think, book. yeah. Right. Uh, I think that, hard. I it. think that has been consistently Good the call. way they've done the books where it was, you know, they did this with Discovery where they were like, you have very limited yes. information, but yet right. you have to 
write the whole story with with the characters that nobody really knows yet. Okay, it's, it's dicey because what are you going to do? Where are you going to go with something that you know that's that's done in six months, much less? Well, that's why months. it's memory memory better, <laughs> better <laughs> not memory out. Good point. Well, they've they've surely already shot the the whole first season. Right. I would think, yeah, yeah, right, because they're about to premiere it. So, yeah. So you know that they, they sh- they've got these things written out at you know easily a year before they're actually released. Oh yeah. So that gives the books and the novelists time to work with them there, but it should be really interesting. It's cool to have these companion type books that are going on at the same time. But here is what caught my attention today, and yeah. you guys seem like you already knew of this days ago, but it slipped right under my nose, which is, is and this is from our buddies over at trekcore.com update yeah. oh that what? was fun that was M- fun <laughs> mbanga and spock's full names incorrect what the heck's well, on the strange new so here are the, the posters that everybody knows about right and here are their names jabilo cool uh spock's is but the thing is that whatever. they were on display at the convention yeah, right. um, a little bit so updated so these are on display here's the, the update posters. from uh here's the update from cbs paramount April 9th update, CBS Paramount reached out to our team this morning to clarify that these update <laughs> these updated character posters were inadvertently displayed with Spock and Mbenga's <laughs> names that were incorrect. The posters were removed mm-hmm. from the Mission Chicago Strange New Worlds costume and prop exhibit. The statement continues, quote, sometimes when you work at warp speed, mistakes are made. While Spock and Mbenga do indeed have first names, they have yet to be revealed, end quote. That what? is so weird. Well, f- well, first of all, first of all, they're not first. So then they well, were revealed. Of, um, Benge would be a first name in case of Spock, it wouldn't be. But sure. it's it just, it's so funny how it's like incorrect. And what happens in six months when they reveal and it's exactly the same. It's gonna, exactly, because like the, all the other idea. information and all these things was correct. It's just oh, like yeah. us nerds. But it was. I reading. It, they they moved they moved super fast because those two those two posters mm-hmm. they were like they were yeah. there and then they were gone and then it, oh really very quickly replaced but, yes yeah. a lot of people did not even notice but was it on Saturday or was it on Friday yeah Friday uh, <laughs> I, it was okay. it was Friday I, th- I was taking photos I didn't I, I just kind of like didn't register because I I knew about at least Spock's name because that well, has come up the, during conventions I saw the, many uh, times Trek movie or Trek core story I like I said I didn't get around until Sunday afternoon which is bad that's what I do. But um, I saw the story fly by and I was like, wow, really? They've done that? And then B, they're putting it on a poster like Lottie Da. You know, I, I thought it was like a fun hunt for yeah. us nerds. That was that was a case of, you know, like left hand, right hand, not talking. But yeah, um, yeah. Either, either somebody jumped a gun or like Larry, I think you said that somebody looked up on, you know, memoryalpha.com and was like, well, that's the name. Well, that's I would say it could even be a matter of somebody was they were doing those posters <clears throat> and they had a space in their template for first name, second name, and some art designer in some marketing place somewhere went, oh, I need a first name for Spock. I wonder what it is. And the looked book. up, you know, and had to go to memory beta to get. That's true. I was just disappointed that oh, it was the oh. Ishmael one. My, pic- my pictures the- from the exhibit have it. And not Dorothy <laughs> Fontana's uh, original one. But anyway, the show us one. your pictures, Anne-Marie. I caught the, I caught the ones before they were changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, I wish it was like in print so it could be a collector's <laughs> item. It is a collector's yeah. item. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, so that was uh that was really weird because as usual, as is the case in this world, when you have something that is big news that comes out to the whole world, even if it gets corrected and updated and or you find out it's not true or it's fake news or it's in, Nobody hears about the correction. Nobody sees the update. They just, it just spreads like wildfire and the correction or the update gets like 1% of the traction of the actual mm-hmm. news item. It's uh, true in science too. <laughs> it's true in everything in media. I mean, you look at, when you see these updated things, you're like, does anybody on Twitter know that this thing got, this article got updated? You know, whatever it is, whatever it happens to be, nobody knows because the, the updated or the the article itself gets like a hundred thousand retweets, and then the update gets like twenty two retweets. <laughs> like, eh, that's yesterday's news. Nobody cares. That's a anymore. good. That's a good retraction too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I, I don't know, maybe they were, well, the thing is that that was a printed prepared item, like, like the exhibit itself, I went there mon- exactly. Friday morning and it wasn't actually completed. Because I walked in, I was like, that's very odd that they don't have any descriptions. It was just the costumes and several props. So I did some photography wow. and then I had to go back because it just so happens that I actually passed right by the props. I didn't because I was just so preoccupied with the costumes. So I wanted to make sure that I take a look at the new phaser and the new tricorder. And and I realized that they actually finally installed those little note cards explaining what each care what, what each costume was that wasn't there on Friday morning, so it was kind of like a lot of things were, uh, I suppose last moment, I don't know. So uh, uh, since up. since we've only got a couple minutes left, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, any final thoughts on Chicago, and. Are you excited for and planning to go to Seattle next year? Um, final thought was it was so wonderful to see so many people. And I love an all Star Trek convention because I'm only interested in the Star Trek. So I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And it was wonderful to see everybody. And it's a great like appetize, appetizer for STLV, which is coming up in a few months. And then um, I don't think yeah. they want to hear that. Um, and then also, <laughs> yes, I mean, a Star Trek convention, I definitely want to go, no matter where. What about you, Muhammad? Any final thoughts? And and uh, are you excited for Seattle? Are you planning on going? So uh, in terms of the final thoughts, I loved it. I, th- I had a great time for exactly the same reasons Dr. Amber said. I mean, it was just wonderful reconnecting with, you know, the, the our Star Trek family, including people here on the screen, all of you guys who are on the screen, aside from you, Ryan. Well, I guess I saw you on the phone, yeah, but, <laughs> but, and many, many people in the chat as well, too. So that, that was by far the biggest highlight. Seattle, I mean, there's a good chance. I mean, the timing is actually better for me because it's after the end of the semester. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to go. I, I, I won't commit right now, but I, I would be happy to go. That's like in mid or late May, right? Yes, yeah, late May. It's uh, yeah, Memorial late, late Day May. weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. So travel expenses. Those, uh, that's, those that's flights are going to be yeah. higher up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marina, do you have any final thoughts on the Chicago, Mission Chicago? First time, I know there was one in 2016, but basically first Mission Chicago thing. Well, well, first first Mission Chicago when we actually have new Star Trek contact being, you know, happening. Sure. Um, I, I was very pleased. There were certain things where I'm like, I'm making notes that, and I gave that feedback to the person that we talked about earlier, that, you know, certain things did not, they just didn't work, you know, and it, it, they can't be fixed. It's, it's not, it's not sure. an issue except for the scheduling. I mean, you can, there's just no way to organize a schedule to make everybody happy. So you just, yeah. you know, make the best of it. Um, mm-hmm. I loved it. And they, again, just the same thing. It's just seeing all the people, pretty much everyone that I could think of was, was in Chicago this time around. Um, I am very excited about Seattle. I've never been to Seattle. So that gives me an opportunity to see, Again, <laughs> you know, as a common, you know, as a frequent uh, convention, that's indeed it's nice to see a new place. Um, but I'm very happy that it's not as close to the cruise because th- this year that was a little bit tricky. I must admit it because we're a little, little tight. We were, we were just we were just at a different Star Trek event. It was far too close, um, especially for two licensed events to be this close together. So it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. I want to see um, whether the feedback that they collected will actually be put to use sort of like what, what ECP does if we're talking about the cruise, um, mm-hmm. how they will perhaps rearrange certain things or adjust them or completely come up with something new. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Next year is going to be uh, great. We have uh, a lot of love for West Coast for a change <laughs> with uh, the cruise living out of LA with Seattle and well, Vegas is already there. So I bet San Francisco will be, get one soon. So they'll hit San Francisco. They'll probably do one in like New Jersey, maybe. You know, I think I'm you know, those it's ones are difficult to, to judge because um, let's see, there's Star Wars celebrations, which is between what Chicago, Anaheim, and Orlando, right? So I wonder if they will also kind of like come across to like sort of like a, a, a trifecta or maybe four or five cities oh, just and just rotate between South, between South them. South. Yeah, like have one in each major region. This we'll see. North Dakota. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Uh, Larry, do you have any final thoughts? And uh, are you excited for Seattle? And what city would you like to throw in the hat for them to go to next? Oh, wow. Well, I, 
I hearing a lot of the behind the scenes. Now you don't say turmoil. I always thought that the, the like I think I think I said earlier, the fan facing into this would always be sp- smooth and professional, and maybe not perfect, but you know. But I just knew that behind the scenes, there's been a this this whole read pop business model of barely putting guests out until the last minute because that's what they were weird. apparently. But it threw so many people off. So one yeah. of two things is going to happen: either they're going to stick with that, and people will just learn. That that's the way Reed is, and just to go go and not worry about it, or maybe they'll bend and start throwing more guests out early. I don't know, but either way, but some of this is learning curve. If if there was anything about about that I was worried or actually came true, it was more of a thing of a bone on bone with no cartilage in the middle. You know, I, like here's the plan, here's the big space, and some of the soft areas that are buffers will will, will come with evolution. But I do know that that that. Um, that's that a convention center in downtown Seattle. I was there four or five years for, for Emerald city and it's mm-hmm. great. And the area around it, that will not be some, and that's not read pop. That's the location. Yeah. And it was heartening to hear the read pop woman say they tried to work with the hotels and the mm-hmm. hotels were just boneheaded and wouldn't do anything, but that yeah. won't be a problem in downtown Seattle where this is. There's lots of eateries and night spots and stuff around. So that won't be mm-hmm. an issue. That, that's very nice to hear because it was yeah. a little bit disheartening to kind of, you know, Sunday night, the convention's mm-hmm. over. Why don't we have a sit down to suddenly discover that everything is closed. Also, we totally. saying they're based in Chicago. So why couldn't they just like go down there in person and talk to them? But, mm-hmm. In fact, I have a Trekland meetup place. It's a bar called the Six Arms. That's like three, three blocks away from the conventions. Cool. I say three blocks. It's easily walked in 10 minutes. Hmm. that's um that's going so no i mean i was relieved to see everything went as well as it did and Mm -hmm. i was kind of tickled that it turned into that local i mean it it, it, on it was one thing i didn't anticipate and it was 90 percent great and 10 percent wow your marketing was a little off but for 90 percent of it it was great to see all the flesh the the new blood and Mm -hmm. and realizing even further that that's why so many kids were there that people would just hop in the car and drive and I don't know if that'll be replicated in Seattle, but there's Seattle's a very geeky place. And that convention center, Sounds I think, has perfect. a different convention every two. It's like, here's the left handed Scrabble Players National Convention. I mean, there, there's tons <laughs> of stuff going on in Seattle uh, that are. When like is that? that? So, what? Asking for a friend. When is that? Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm right handed, but I could seven. dominate those lefties. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I do think real quick before we go, the uh, the Mission Chicago method of releasing all the names like three days before the convention might be really smart because, and bear with me, we all buy tickets going, don't worry, they're going to, they'll let us know who's going to be, oh, it's going to be awesome. And they don't actually have to release any names because by then you bought all the tickets, they could save a ton of money, they, they could only... They could just book like eight guests and then they, they release those eight guest names way ahead of time. We all think, oh, there's going to be more coming. Trust me, they always do it and they can just save a ton of money that way. So it's a good business model. I one get year. it. It works for one Yeah, year. it works once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we go, everybody, it is time for the Star Trek Day trivia question mm. of the day. Oh my God, we teased this on Friday. Uh, here it is. Which Star Trek captain has an artificial heart it's a tough one don't answer right away <laughs> god it's a t- don't spoil it for everybody in the live chat it's, it's a boy all oh, the ca- well the cards can be outdated now lucky like for us story. lucky for us it's multiple choice <laughs> is it a jonathan archer is it b benjamin cisco is it c jean-luc picard is it d Catherine Janeway. All right. So Jellico, no, don't, no Jellico yeah, option. boy. Yeah. He, well, he wants a, uh, he's the reason that there are four answers instead of three. Jellico is he does think, standard four think, question shift. Wasn't it canon that Carol Freeman had an artificial heart? I <laughs> so uh, check this out. Everybody at home, you can now watch the newest episode of the seventh rule. You are going to love this one. It is season six's episode entitled In the Pale Moonlight. You may have heard of this one. It's a big one. Go over to the seventh rule after this. Go watch our full review of In the Pale Moonlight. You are going to love it uh, because it's one of the best episodes of all time. Some say the best. I can live with it. I can live with it. I can live with it. Uh, Also, tomorrow, 
Uh, Falling Tower, watch the first podcast at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll premiere our episode, our review of Paramount Plus's new show entitled Halo with Sci-Fi Sister Zone, Tamia Harper. So this is going to be a fun one. Check that out. You got Sci-Fi Sisters, you got Falling Tower, you got Paramount Plus, Halo for the uh, gaming nerds out there, which I don't think any of us are. Uh, that's tomorrow, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Then on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the seventh rules review of the new Picard episode that's going to come out. We're going to talk about James Callis. We're going to be like, is that Gaius Baltar? I don't know. Is that is that Dr. Bashir? No, it says not, not James Callis, whatever. We're going to have some fun. And uh, then on Friday, everybody knows at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, it's time to Star Trek and chill. And that's going to be live. It's going to be a good time. Muhammad probably won't be there because he's busy on Fridays, but it's still going to be fun. We're going to do our best, even if Muhammad's not there. I know. I know everybody's sorry. Don't bummed. let y'all down. <laughs> and then lastly, on Sunday, Sunday's a big day, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. See how quickly I can add three? Yes. Uh, we, <laughs> the seventh rule premieres our episode. Oh, wait, what is that? That's Easter, right? Well, you don't, who cares about Easter? Uh, it's also my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Eric Husk. It's on Easter this year. I don't think he cares about Easter, though, so it doesn't do anything for him. Um, we are doing re releasing our review of Deep Space Nine's Time's Orphan, a Molly O'Brien-centric episode, which is a fun one. So that's a good one. And then right after that, at 9.30 a.m., Right, right after that, 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Central, uh, Biotrek, or sorry, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> my own time zone. Biotrek with the Admiral will go over Discovery Season 4, Episodes 7 through 9 to get a bonus one for your Easter present. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be discussing those. Uh, and it'll go from 12.30, it's about 30 minutes long. So tune in, just hop on over right from the live chat of The Seventh Rule over to Biotrek with the Admiral. And keep on chatting. Super easy, everybody. You've got over an hour of fun ahead of you on Easter. Uh, and then when you say he is risen, you could mean like, you know, he is risen and, and fill in your seventh rule or bio Trekkie joke in there. Uh, I like that Muhammad mentioned central time because that's where you just came from. Yeah. So the answer, everybody, is this is what? Captain John Luke Picard. Hmm. <laughs> Who knew? It is C, everybody. It's C. I know. If you don't it's believe Morka. me. <laughs> So uh you had no heart. I just been dom jotted. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Play dom jot human. Uh every time I do that for Srock, I'm like, trust me, one of these days you're gonna see that episode, and you're gonna be like, that's a good impression. Pretty good. Uh Marina, where can everybody find you online if they'd like to and you would like them to? <laughs> uh well, I'm on Facebook, on uh Twitter, and on Instagram. The last two at uh Dracorex, D R uh I cannot even spell anymore. D R A K K O R E X. Um, I'm one of the admins for the Star Trek Experiences uh, Convention Experiences Group, and also the unofficial missions group. Um, and with my friend Jesse, we host uh, Shoreleaf, your Star Trek Convention Community Podcast. Um, so you know, best way to reach out publicly is probably via Twitter. Big love, big shout out to Jesse Okendo, your partner. Yay, he is awesome, and we love him. Uh, Larry, where can everybody find you? Any of your uh, fourteen or fifteen shows? No, there. You know, there. We lost. We stopped live support live. After yeah. Uh, but we're we're keeping the brand. We'll do some specials and we'll do live things at cons. But Larry Nimichek on Twitter, and then it's Larry Nimichek's Trekland everywhere else, including my YouTube. I need more subscribers, so I haven't I haven't gone and paid a million bucks to get the number up, but. Okay, what, what is that on YouTube again? Everybody, at, right after this, just yeah. go, you're already on YouTube. Just go right just over. What is it? Go over to it. It's Larry Nemechek's Trekland, just like the way everything else is. Yeah. Larry Nemechek's awesome. Trekland, yes. type that in and give him a subscribe. <clears throat> It'll be there. And I want to just say our, new, our news from Chicago was we are bringing back the big tour with Geek Nation Tours. So it's July 2023. It's 10 days. Oh, Tim Geek Russ. Nation. Yeah, yeah. So uh, look at geeknationtours.com. There's going to be a link on my page at larrynimichek.com because I've got a couple of other tours coming up too. But 
always go to LarryNemichuk.com and that'll link over there too. But just letting everybody know that's happening. But I'm going to have a tour before the cruise day. I've got the Gene Roddenberry really? live tour in August for two days here in LA. So um, LarryNemichuk.com and you can get everything on everything there. Love it. That is great. Uh, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, where can everybody find you online? You're, you're um, in New York right now, right? And, and I'm in the border of Illinois, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> but um, at Anne Marie Siegel one on Twitter. Got it. She's fighting a coughing fit. She's like, let me just get this one quick. <laughs> Don't ask me any dumb questions, Ryan. Don't ask anything. Yeah. It was all uh, said. <laughs> Mohammed, where can we find you online? Well, should they choose before, to? Yeah, before I answer that, let me just rep my this shirt that I'm wearing. This is from Walking Art, made hey. by Melissa from Melissa hey. Longo. So, oh, that's awesome! It's a very, awesome. very cool shirt. She has a lot of other great Trek products, so make sure you check yeah. that out. And then, less interesting, my stuff is I'm on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, and Facebook is Mafnur M A F like in Frank Noor and like November O O R. Or on YouTube is Biotreki B I O T R E K K I E. And everybody, if you'd like to find me, here I am. So, <laughs> come on, do a better answer. Oh, that. Marina, uh, don't encourage him. You can just go to uh, obviously Virtual Trek Con or Falling Tower. Uh, Falling Tower has a million subscribers, by the way, everybody. Now they're like, well, wow. then why would I go subscribe? Just we need a million and one. And the seventh rule on uh, all social media as well. Those three places, go check those out. Find me, say hello, and I'll say hello back, maybe. Great. So thank you all very much for joining us. Marina, this has been amazing. Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, this has been so cool. Thank you guys so much for taking the time and walking us through a very recent memory lane. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad I was in. This has already recovered twice as good as it was on Sunday. So, so yeah. yay. So thanks for having me over. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Something to like the last minute thing. I mean, you know, all these little things that I was showing, like the bear and everything, because I'm sure somebody's out there might actually want this. They did say that there are whatever's left after the show, they are selling it online. So if you go to uh, the whole.com, um, it's it, yeah, T H E H a u l dot com the whole and it's just like you search by fandom for star trek and whatever was at the show t-shirts and the bear and actually the badges themselves which have very nice artwork you can get it for yourself those you were know. cool yeah yeah they were cool hmm. uh so everybody check that out uh everybody right now in the live chat is like wow you guys just gave us a lot of chores to do when we get off but just go <laughs> ahead and do it it's fun well i'll say real quick i did four live streams with interviews with uh fan sets guys star trek wines the shoe pe- the vogue glove the boot people and also i didn't mention him <laughs> George, uh uh Frage, who used who was the great brains behind think geeks trek stuff and now has his own company he did the tom paris plate Mm-hmm. And then that led to Star Trek Unlimited, and they have all kinds of cool stuff. So they're yeah. they're going to be on my YouTube, but for right now, I had to do them Facebook Live then. So that's where mm-hmm. they are. If you want to see talk to some, um, they still may have some uh, some uh, lingering con stuff. You can there's some kind of a vote on Star Trek wines. Um, yes, what the, was that it's 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 about the rice and uh, wine. So it's a is it, is it, it do, you know the bottle that looks like from the orig- the way it looked uh, in the original series or the way it looks like in Picard, so they did the whole thing. But I strongly suspect they're gonna do both. <laughs> I was thinking there was something about a recipe, like what is wrong? They're taking a vote on like what actually is Romulan ale, like the, what kind of a liquor is it? No, no, yeah, no, no somebody no. mentioned in the live chat that it better be actually like ale because sometimes people try to do like oh it's romulan ale and it's a bottle of cabernet or something like that you know like make it make it ale make it blue make it pink make it blue well Um, we'll see are they gonna pick out something but i I suspect it's gonna be probably wine because they do tremendous job with wines i mean look that was a disney reference lineup extraordinary right emory she gets it um okay last thing (laughs) does not look impressed (laughs) <laughs> David Schroeder says, oops, I missed it. So we have to do this whole thing over again, you guys. But yeah. everybody at home, when you want a uh, deep dive into all the conventions that you may have missed, that you maybe you went to and you really want to relive it, put it on the main viewer. <laughs>